Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the Materials panel. So, the Materials panel is the panel that contains the materials. It's the colors, textures, whatever you want to call them that are actually in your model. And it is, it's the place they're all stored so you can edit the ones that are in there and you know go in and add new ones or maybe remove extra ones from it. Let's take a look at using it right now. Okay, so I have a very simple model here. I got a little cube here. Uh, I got some yellow on one side, kind of this salmon-y color on this side, and then some plywood material up on top. Uh, so pretty simple model, but I want some materials in here. Something you want to keep in mind when you start looking at materials is the fact that there are more materials than just whatever you have added to the model. If you have a scale figure in the model, that scale figure is also covered with materials. So if we look at Sal over here, uh, he does have a couple different colors in his shoes, another one for his pants, his shirt, his beard, his skin. And, and I missed this the first time I was looking at Sal, but... He's got, his, uh, whoop, he's got his wedding ring on right there, and that is another color too. So when we look at the materials that are in this job, there are more than just three. There's three plus everything that Sal is wearing. And we're gonna pull up the materials tab right now over here on the right. It has an icon, it's a little cube with a checkerboard on one side. We're gonna tap that and expand that materials tab. All right, so this is the materials panel. The bulk of the materials panel is filled up with little tiles of the materials that are currently that are in your current model. So if you are a SketchUp Pro user, either on Windows or on Mac, you're probably used to seeing something a lot more complex than this. This is gonna feel shockingly simple. It's literally just a list of what's in the model. And that's, that's what SketchUp for iPad keeps, is what's in the model. Um, there are ways to access additional materials. We'll talk about adding colors in just a second, but know that this list, there's not, there's not a sorting up at the top right now where you can go, okay, show me what's in the model, I'll show me what's on a different list of materials or whatever. It is just the list of what is currently in the model. So just to, to quickly run through this, if I wanted to change this, I don't like this yellow color, I want to use this bluish color instead. If I tap on that bluish material in paint bucket, that's going to add that material to the bucket. So all I have to do now is tap to use it. And there we go, got my bluish material because I tapped it. If I wanted to switch back to the yellow, I would tap the yellow and you'll notice that loads into the paint bucket. So super simple, easy way to select colors. Um, it's if I wanna add, edit a color, tap it again, and here's the information about that material. Here's the name, here's the color. Um, and here's the opacity. So I can, you know, if I want to change this from a yellow, I could change it to something else. If I want to change the opacity, I could do that. Um, but yeah, so so pretty pretty simple, uh, pretty simple to use your user interface here. I mean, it's, it's really very very basic. There's not a whole lot to it. If I want to create a brand new material, I can tap on the plus. And that's gonna bring up that exact same screen we just saw, but it's not using an existing material. So if I do wanna change this, of course, I can type whatever material name I want in material names. And then this, the bulk of the screen is just this big tile. This tile is showing the color it's being used right now. If I wanna change it, I just tap this little circle right here. And this is going to pull up a couple different ways to put in materials. So I have the option of choosing from a grid, which is a bunch of predefined uh, colors that are just kind of in a gradient here. I can pick one specifically from there. I can use the spectrum, which they're basically a bunch of tiny little squares too. They're just super tiny. So I, I would have to zoom in real small to see the individual colored squares, but that's what they are, just pixels of colors. And then of course I can go to sliders where I can actually use values, uh, red, green, and blue to change into a specific color. Uh, I'm gonna go to spectrum and the way I can work this is just, I slide my pen along there and you can see as, I'm, as the tip of my pencil moves to different colors, it's showing up in the box there on the bottom. And I wanna get a nice bright green color, so I'm gonna go right here. Now. I could just add that right now and it would show up as a green color as a new tile, but I also have the ability to change the opacity. So if I wanna put this in as like something I can see through, I'm gonna slide it down to 50 for this example, and then we'll tap out of here and I'll see that I have this material. So this box right here, this preview box, 
actually takes your color and lays it down over a half black, half white background. If your material is 100% opacity, you won't see that background at all. It'll just be solid, like I see over here. But in the case of a material that is semi-transparent, I'll see what it looks like in front of a pure white and what it looks like in front of a pure black material. And I can see I can actually change that slider right here too. So you can see if I slide all the way up to 100% opacity, all the way down to zero means it's totally invisible. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it there around 50. And I'm gonna go cl click OK right now. And again, anytime I interact over here, something's gonna end up highlighted. So you can see my new materials highlighted. That means it's in my paint bucket. And if I tap, it gets applied to that face. So you can see that face, because I use the 50% material, I can actually see the back side of the, the box right in there and I can see those two faces. Um, the next button, so next to new is copy. So if I click copy with my translucent material highlighted, it's gonna pull it up. It has a new name because it has copy added right there. Uh, and here's my material. So I'm gonna say I wanna copy that same green, but at 100% op opacity. I could change anything here. The other thing we skipped over real quick was add texture. If I hit the plus right there, it'll pull up your camera roll and show you the materials that you have or the pictures that you have on your iPad. And you can actually grab any of them and turn them into material, into, uh, material to apply by picking it right from that screen. In this case, I'm gonna click OK and see now I got a new material here, which I could add to that face. Now, if I ever wanted to get rid of a material, all I have to do is select it and hit the next icon, which is the remove from the job, well, it's it's the trash can, it's the delete button. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it and see it just went away. It went away with no question, no fuss or anything because that material was not actually used anywhere in my model. If I select a material that is used like this light green that I just put on here and I hit the trash button, look what comes up. It comes up and says, it is in use. Do you want to replace it with the default material? I have the option of hitting replace or cancel. So I don't have, I can't go, oh no, use some other color. It's either delete it and fill anything that was that material with the default material, which is this white on the front, uh, bluish gray on the back, or don't cancel, don't, don't erase it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit replace and you'll see it goes away and turns back to white and it'll go back to where we were originally because I'll come here and grab my yellow and then put it right there. Now, if you want to bring in more default materials than what I see right here, you can hit this warehouse button. This warehouse button is gonna take you to a collection called materials, and these are the default materials that pro users are used to seeing in SketchUp for desktop. These are all the exact same material tiles that we see everywhere else. So if I wanted to get some wood textures in here, I could click on this wood texture. There we go, see all those tiles are the same ones that are the default tiles on SketchUp Pro. I'm gonna hit download, and what download's gonna do is it's gonna bring this little model just exactly what I just saw on the other screen, and it's gonna drop it into my model. Now, when it gets placed in there, because each of these tiles has a new material on it, they all show up right here, see that, in my new materials. So what that means is I could go grab, say, this wood material and apply it right here to replace that yellow. Now, as long as these tiles stay in the model, these materials will stay in this panel over here. So if I was to exit and come back in, everything would show up just like this. But if I was to select and delete that little imported group, when I go to exit now, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I do wanna save. It's gonna come up and say, do I wanna purge unused? The unused are all these materials that I have saved in my materials panel that aren't actually in the model. Remember what I said, the, the material panel saves what's in the model and shows it to you? This is what it's asking. It's saying, oh, you got a whole bunch of materials over here that I can't find anywhere in the model. If I say yes, when I, it gets rid of those materials, takes me out here, now when I bring, come back in here, oh, my material list ends right there with that dark floor, floor wood dark, wood, sorry, wood floor dark, because that's the last one. All the rest of those materials that were down below it were part of that group that I deleted, so no longer a part of that materials panel. So that was a lot of stuff to cover. Um, if you're new to SketchUp and you're just starting to use SketchUp for iPad, it should be a breeze. It's a very simple user interface. It's really easy to click through and get the materials you want. If you're used to using SketchUp Pro, if you're a desktop user and you're migrating over to iPad, 
it may fumble a couple times. Uh, it doesn't have all the stuff that, that the other pieces have where we leverage the operating system. So you might stub your toe once or twice looking for something like that. You just gotta think simple. iPad, simpler. Keep it easy. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. What do you think of the panel, materials panel in iPad versus desktop? What, what else do you think we should spotlight here on Square One? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.